Uh, Kazakhstan, perhaps like no other country in the world, has suffered from the effects of nuclear weapons testing. The United Nations estimates that 1.5 million people suffered from the effects of nuclear radiation over four decades. Uh, without any hesitation, we came up out, out as champions uh, for nuclear disarmament and nuclear proliferation. The president of Kazakhstan took the decision to renounce nuclear weapons, uh, to shut down the Semipalatinus nuclear test site and to campaign for a nuclear uh, free, weapons free world. My president immediately understood that uh, a false concept of being secure by possessing nuclear weapons was absolutely crazy. Therefore, he stuck to his own uh, vision that uh, the best security will be ensured when you get rid of these uh, deadly weapons. President Nazarbayev's leadership in nuclear disarmament began with the closure of the Semipalatinus nuclear test site in 1991 and then the renunciation of the nuclear weapons Kazakhstan inherited from the Soviet Union. But it didn't stop there. It continues over the past two decades through initiatives, such as the initiative to establish a low-enriched uranium bank of the International Atomic Energy Agency. There are already uh, plans to build globally 400 nuclear power plants. And there are still more countries around the world that are interested in starting a civilian nuclear energy program. Each of them wants to be sure before they start on such a program that there is an assured fuel supply, that the low enriched uranium will be available. The enrichment capacities are famous for their dual use and the difficulty to control and to draw a line between just the peaceful use of nuclear and the military use. Some countries have said that in order to be assured that they will have that fuel supply in the future, they need to have their own enrichment capability. But if every country that develops their own enrichment capability, this is going to be a very difficult world to live in because you're going to have not one Iran that we're worried about developing nuclear weapons, we're going to have many different Irans. But to have an operation in a country such as Kazakhstan with such a strong record on nuclear issues, under the supervision of an international agency that includes virtually every country in the world and has the independence from political factors, that's what would give additional countries assurance that this fuel bank will be there if they ever need it. It gives them an international, neutral, reliable supply of low enriched uranium for power reactors so they don't have to develop their own enrichment capabilities that are, could be misused to produce the fuel for nuclear weapons. So it takes that off the, uh, off the table and as a result it makes everyone in the world safer. It's being used every day that you have countries that decide that they can rely on the marketplace and this back up to the marketplace and not develop their own enrichment capability. The fact that uh, Kazakhstan was entrusted uh, with this uh, initiative to host this uh, LEU bank signals about the global recognition of Kazakhstan uh, as uh, the lead in uh, nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation, uh, global confidence uh, that uh, Kazakhstan will be able to deliver on this uh, new important mission, uh, and uh, uh, global uh, support for Kazakhstan to succeed uh, in this uh, very important common uh, effort. So to come back here uh, and to now be able to participate and witness the signing of the host nation uh, for the fuel bank, to me is a continuation of the story of Kazakhstan leadership. As I said to President Nazarbayev in uh, a meeting a few minutes ago, you've stepped up to the plate again, you're setting an example for the world, so uh, we're very grateful for that. <laughs>